Old School RuneScape is a game where at its core, you level and progress your character to meet whatever goals you've set for yourself. Getting to the end game requires you to spend hundreds, if not thousands of hours leveling all your skills to get you to that point. But what if you were to split your account in two? The premise of this series is simple. I will be playing on a fresh duo group Iron Man, where I play both of the accounts. One of them is an 807, which means it can only train combat stats and Slayer. The name 807 is a reference to where the total level ends up when it's maxed. And the other account is a level 3 skiller, so if it increases your combat level, then I cannot train it. Immediately, what you must be thinking is, oh, this just sounds like a regular Iron Man with extra steps. And that may be true to an extent. We can get items that regular 807s and skillers wouldn't normally be able to obtain, but we also have all of the limitations and therefore challenges of playing each account style. The 807 can't do the majority of quests in the game, which give huge upgrades. It can't access many bosses in the game like Muspa, Nex, Zolra, the Forgotten Four, and the Tombs of a Masket. And it's going to have a hard time getting around due to lack of teleports and always being at level 1 agility. As for the skiller, I'm stuck at 10 hit points, 1 defense, and don't have protection prayers, so I can die easily if I'm not careful. I can't access Mauritania, I can't use any spells. These accounts have a lot of problems, but that should be what makes it fun. I do have an end goal in mind for these guys, but I'll save that for a bit later, because the main goal I have for them is to just progress them as far as they can go. So let's get into it. Oh my god, man, I am so excited for this. <laughs> I don't know why, but I just think this is going to be like such a fun account style to play. A dolo group Iron Man, who is stupid enough to do something like this? So this is killer group Iron Man, or just killer for sure. This is going to be an 807 account, like I said, so only combat on this one, no scaling. And yeah, it should be pretty cool. And then we can switch over to this and see this is a uh, group Iron Man skiller. I mean, skiller group Iron Man. She's a pacifist, you know, she doesn't like hurting anybody, and uh, she's just a level 3 skiller. So, yeah, this is gonna be exciting, man. Our group is called, uh, Killer Skiller. Yeah, I think it's about time that we leave and get started on our first little thing that I have planned. So, something important to note is, um, down here in the chat box, obviously, you know, the elephant in the room, there is a whole other client down here, and there's a little icon. Let me know if you think this is a little bit too cluttered. I could remove either one if you want. Like I can remove the icon or I can remove the second account or maybe just leave the second account for, uh, you know, sometimes have it there, sometimes not. But pretty much what it is is it just shows the other account what the other account is up to. And the little icon just shows which account is which. So that way you can tell easily since we'll be going back and forth between two accounts a lot on this series. It'll probably be, you know, worth having the icon there to tell which one is on screen at which time. With that all being said, we're going to enter the portal and we're going to start our journey. Wait, hold on. We got to take her with us. All right, let's get out of here. So what is the very first thing we're going to be doing on this account? Well, I think we're going to do something a little bit untraditional. You know, we could do like the Winter Todd rush on the Skiller account, or we could just do a bunch of quests on the main account or main account, the 807 account. But we're actually going to do something a bit different. We're not even members yet, and we're not going to put membership on our accounts because the first thing we're going to do is head over to Castle Wars and snag a couple Halos, one for each account. Why not? It just seems like an interesting way to start the account. And it's a free-to-play mini game, and uh, we don't need to train any skills at all to get them. So we're going to go to Castle Wars real quick and get some Halos. Um, I don't think we can use the mini game teleport yet. Is there one? Is there even a teleport for that? Oh, we can just teleport right to Castle Wars. Hell yeah, dude. The first discovery on the account. This is exciting. We got the 807 account over here in uh, Zamorak. And we got the skiller over here in Saradomen. So in two minutes, the game is going to start. And then um, we're literally just going to AFK the entire game. I think it takes like 20 minutes for each game. We literally just stand in place. And then if the score is tied 0-0, zero to zero, I think we each get two tickets for that. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's two tickets if the score is tied 0-0. Zero to zero. And we need 75 tickets for a Halo. So we're going to need to do 38 games of Castle Wars which is going to take approximately 12, 13 hours, somewhere around there. So this is going to be a super solid AFK grind to start this account off while I edit videos and do stuff like that. So uh, yeah, see you when the action starts. Okay, so the game has started and we have our logout timer on Runelight set to 25 minutes so we can idle for 25 minutes before we, um, before we log out. And then I guess what we do is we kind of just stand out here and wait for the game to end. You do have to actually leave the room. It says you have two minutes to leave the room or else you're going to get kicked from the game. Yeah, you just leave the room. You don't have to go all the way out here, I don't think, but whatever. 
And then uh, we just chill and wait for the game to end. The 20 minute timer is up here. I'm gonna start editing some videos now, so see you after something happens. Any second now, this game should be over. And there it is, 76 tickets, one on each account, or I guess 76 on each account, and we can now afford to buy Halos. But as you can see, he doesn't sell them in free-to-play world, so it's time to bond up the accounts and get the journey really started. And would you look at that? We are officially in the members' worlds. So now that we're members, we can trade, and there's the Halos. We're gonna buy the Zamorak one on this account. We didn't get the collection log pop-up. There we go, I fixed it for this account, so for this one, we should get a pop-up. There we go, doesn't that look nice? Now the accounts both have halos. I don't really know why we did this, but I'm glad that we did. As you can see, they have some pretty good defensive bonuses and also the most important one, a plus three prayer bonus. So now that we got this arbitrary start out of the way, let's get into the real content. So just to get this out of the way right now, um, the reason I'm wearing a bow on the skiller account is because I don't have any ammo in the quiver. So that way, if I accidentally misclick on somebody, like if I try and attack this goblin, it doesn't attack or punch or anything like that. It just says there's no ammo left in your quiver. So this is a way that you can prevent accidentally getting combat XP. Just felt like I should get that out of the way right now. And just real quick, I don't think I like the green shirt. I think I'm just gonna upgrade this outfit real quick. There we go. That looks a little bit better, especially with the red halo. But anyway, what is the skiller up to? We are about to start the natural history quiz. So let's get it started. And that should be the last of them. So if we talk to Orlando Smith, he should give us XP in Hunter and Slayer. And I know what some of you are thinking, is Slayer XP, is that okay on a uh, level three skiller account? It is because, uh, you know, even with level nine Slayer, I am still level three combat because this doesn't actually train your combat. I know Slayer is a combat based skill, but since it doesn't actually raise your combat level, we are allowed to train it. Either way, we skipped straight to level nine Hunter, which will be nice for what we're gonna do next, which is go straight for 83 for Dragon Implings to get the, the 807 a glory. So let's get started on the Hunter grind. Meanwhile, we got this account over here and uh, what's he gonna be up to? I think we're gonna rush 43 prayer on this guy. I think that's gonna be the move. I think we're gonna go up into the wilderness and we're gonna go grab big bones from the boneyard and sacrifice them at the chaos altar. And we're just gonna rush 43 prayer right off the bat. Why not? You know, it'll be good for the account. So here we are at the boneyard. As you can see, there are plenty of big bone spawns, but there's also a bunch of level 25 skeletons running around, which is uh, not a good sign. So we're just gonna kind of go in, try and grab a couple big bones without getting attacked, please. Oh no. <laughs> oh, we're just gonna die, aren't we? No! <laughs> oh, I need a better plan. I need a better plan. You know, unironically, this is not copium. This is a good thing, okay? This is a good thing. As I was walking to the boneyard, I realized that I should have done the Restless Ghost quest first because this will get me straight up to level nine prayer. So we're just gonna do that real quick. So on the skiller account for the hunter grind, I just used a Castle Wars teleport so I can run over to Yanil and we are gonna buy ourselves a bird snare or two. We're gonna need a couple bird snares and uh, that might be it for now, honestly. Yeah, I'll just be catching birds until level 27. So two snares should be good. So now I guess we're gonna be making our way all the way up here <laughs> um, if we can, so we can catch the copper long tail birds. And we're gonna be doing that all the way to level 27, I believe. And that is the Restless Ghost completed on the 807. We're now 10 prayer and combat level four. We're a 10 prayer, by the way, instead of nine, because I buried those three big bones that I <laughs> took with me when I died. So yeah, 10 prayer and the goal is 43. We have made it all the way over here to the other side of the map. We're at Piscatoris and we're over here by the Copper Longtails. I'm just gonna lay a couple traps out. Yeah, this is gonna be a pretty chill process. We're just sitting here waiting for the birds to grab it, come on. Oh, any takers? Let's go, dude, first bird. Not even a level, unhumble. I'm gonna put the trap right here. This looks like a better spot. And if we move over to this account, uh, the change that we're gonna make to the Boneyard layout is I'm going to grab the group Iron Man armor because this actually has the same defensive bonuses as iron armor, I believe. I think I'm gonna leave the van braces just because they don't really provide that much defense and I protect three items if I die anyway. We're gonna rock the budget tank setup and we're gonna go back. So here's the new plan. 
Ooh, an iron scimitar. I forgot about that. We're just going to grab this one set of big bones, run back here, hop worlds. We're just going to grab one bone from each world. It's going to take a long time, but, you know, I have plenty of time. And here is level 10 hunter. And here's the first inventory of big bones. Check the XP per hour thing down here. Let's see what we get. There we go. From 10 to 17 prayer, just like that. Five combat. Just a couple more trips over here and we should be good. And by a couple, I mean probably like, I don't know, 10, 12 more, but whatever. There we go. 22 prayer, six combat. And inventory three brings us up to 25 prayer, almost 26. There is 15 hunter and it is also a full inventory of raw bird meat. And we're not going to waste this cooking XP. I'm going to go bank it. Inventory four. Just under 29 prayer. The skiller is unlocking the gnome stronghold. There we go. I'm gonna bank all that. And I'm also gonna bring these because there's trees over there. I can just cook the birds while I'm there. Save some time from uh, not having to bank. There's 32 prayer from inventory number six, I believe this is. Starting to lose track, but I'm pretty sure that was six. So our inventory is full of raw bird meat. So what I'm gonna do is cut this tree down. What do you mean I can't light a fire here? Dude, this is taking such a long time. What is this? There we go. And then cook them as a spit roast. Oh my God, I didn't know that. I guess we do have to bank every single one. Just because I'm angry, I'm gonna get this freaking fire making level. There's two fire making and we might as well get two wood cutting as well. All right, you guys. So I was banking in the gnome stronghold and I looked over and saw the agility course and I decided, you know what? Let's just go for 10 agility. Why not? It's going to get us to the level where we can do the Drainer Village rooftop course. If I leave this side of the map without doing 10 agility, I'm going to regret it. So just figured I'd bang out 10 agility right now. And now we can get back into Hunter. Would you look at this? We got 20 Hunter on the Skiller. This means we can now place two traps at a time, which is pretty hype. So now we can not only lay down one bird snare, but we can lay down a second as well. This should make the XP per hour way higher. And would you look at that? We got 36 prayer on the 807 as well. Maybe we can even get 37. We're one level away from the first protection prayer. And here it is, 37 prayer. We've unlocked our first protection prayer, protect from magic. Oh, this is a peak here. Uh, leave me alone, please. Thank you. He's probably too high level to attack me. He's probably over level 45, but I'm gonna hop anyway. Oh my God, it's even worse. Oh, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Oh no, it happens. We are now 27 Hunter, which means we can catch ferrets, I believe. But more importantly, it means we can start the Eagle's Peak quest, which is what we're going to do right now. And here we are starting the Eagle's Peak quest. This should be pretty inconvenient <laughs> with my lack of teleports and everything, but you know, we should still be able to do it. And here we go. Best in slot fashion scape has been obtained on the account. There's really no need to progress the account any further than this. We kind of made it already. There it is, 43 prayer. We can now protect from melee. We have all three protection prayers. Would you look at that? I don't think you guys understand. This is such a good way to start an account because when we do all of those early level quests that get us all the attack XP, strength XP, defense XP, whatever, like it's not even gonna be a problem. We're just gonna be tearing through them. We don't have to do any like weird safe spots. We could just face tank them with our prayers on. Like the foundation has been set for this account. I wish I could tell you how many inventories that took, how many inventories of big bones, but unfortunately I lost track a long time ago, but I think it was definitely more than 10, more than 12, maybe even more than 15. So it took me a couple hours to do it, but damn, was that worth it? <laughs> 43 prayer, we're up to eight combat. So now let's start uh, actually training our melee stats. Let's do some quests, let's do some other stuff. Let's get this account looking real nice, real strong. So the first thing that we're gonna do um, now that we're done with being in the wilderness, I don't care how high my combat level gets. So we're going to start training our combat level up and uh, we're going to hit this dummy a bunch of times until we get to eight attack because that's the highest that we can get off of a dummy. And the very last swing, there is eight attack. There's now nothing more we can learn from hitting a dummy. And on the skiller account, we are currently learning how to use box traps. This is the whole point of Eagle's Peak. We do the quest so that we can get a little bit of hunter XP, but also so we can learn how to use box traps. This is gonna be nice for catching chinchampas in the future. 
And here's the Eagle's Peak quest completed. We got a juicy bit of Hunter XP, access to the Eagle Transport, which is, you know, I don't know how useful it's going to be, but, you know, any transportation on an account like this that can't use the spellbook is very beneficial. And, of course, the ability to use box traps. We got two level 29 Hunter. I would love to catch Swamp Lizards, but this account cannot access Mauritania. So what we're going to end up doing is using box traps and catching ferrets all the way to level 53. Then we're going to catch chinchampas to 63. Then we're going to catch red chinchampas all the way to 83. So we can get ourselves a dragon impling and therefore the amulet of glory. And switching over to this account, there was another benefit of doing the prayer grind right off the bat. You need, I don't remember the prayer level to access the upstairs area of the Edgeville Monastery, but we have that level. So we can go upstairs and we can grab ourselves monk's robe top. Isn't that so cool, man? Not just the top. We can grab ourselves monk robes. And I think I'm going to world hop and just fill my inventory up with these bad boys. So we can always have uh, some backup pairs. But of course we got to put it on. Look at this guy. These robes pretty much just have a fat prayer bonus to them. So we're plus 14 prayer right now with the halo and everything. So that's going to be pretty nice for questing, which is what we're going to do next on this account. So there's one aspect of group Iron Man I haven't really mentioned yet. And I'm sure most people already know about it. But just in case, this is the group storage. It's essentially an area where you can just kind of deposit stuff for your the people in your group to access. For example, I'm going to add two sets of monk robes for my partner in here and I'm gonna grab this strength potion and this onion just stuff that I gave myself and then uh, you can hit save and then we can switch over to this account go to the bank go to group storage and would you look at that we have monk robes on both accounts now so it's like we traded except you know across the entire map from each other and across worlds too so pretty cool oh also forgot I need a spade too and we need the spade because the 807 doesn't have a cape yet that's kind of messed up. So let's dig right here and get this sick looking one. So yeah, this is my first time ever catching ferrets for XP because normally you just go to swamp lizards after you're done with the quest. Uh, I'm gonna switch the left click to release because I really don't think there's a reason that you should ever need ferrets for anything. And yeah, they are 115 XP each, which is way better than what I'm used to from Hunter so far on this account. And here it is. Waterfall quest completed. We get a ton of strength and attack XP. 30 strength and 30 attack. We can now use adamant weapons and our combat is level 27. And here's the imp catcher quest completed. We got the first little bit of magic XP on the account straight to level 8. And more importantly, we got the amulet of accuracy, which pairs very well with our Zamorak Halo, but it's also our best in slot amulet probably until um, the skiller gets me something from an impling. And this should be Witch's Potion completed for some more magic XP, bringing us up to level 10. Can we get a level here? There it is, 13 magic. We went to the Stronghold of Security, got some money, bought some runes, and we're rounding up uh, 13 magic so we can use Fire Strike. And now there's a couple quests we can do now that we have, um, now that we have Fire Strike unlocked. There's the Vampire Slayer quest completed, brings us up to 33 attack. And here's the Witch's House quest completed. Bring us up to 25 hit points and 32 combat. And on the skiller, if we check this box right here, that brings us up to 40 hunter, which is cool because now we can place an extra trap. We were at two and now we're at three. And this is going to speed up our XP quite a bit. And this right here is what we got 43 prayer for. I would have to do like a weird safe spot for this guy, but I can literally just one tick flick this and you know, he can't touch us. There we go. I was on my way over to turn in the Trinome Village quest, and I just saw these monks of Zamorak, so I decided, you know what? Let me try and get the robe top and bottom, and we did. These things have a prayer bonus, just like the monk robes, just not as good, but they also have magic attack and defense. So, yeah, now if we want to mage stuff, we got better bonuses for it. And here is the Trinome Village quest completed. We get a bunch of attack XP, bringing us up to level 38. 5,000 GP for doing this quest. That's a very nice addition to the cash stack. That's going to be good for some runes. And then we get 1,000 Slayer XP, 30 Slayer points. Yes, I would like a Slayer task. 22 Sour Hogs, all right. And here we go, level 47 Hunter. We can now catch Orange Salamanders, something that I've, uh, you know, spent a little bit of time doing in my life. But we're going to go do that until we can catch Chinchampas, so to the desert. And here we go. We can set up three traps at these trees right here. And the XP should be pretty freaking nice from these guys. 
and then I noticed something terrible had happened. Wait, what is this? When did I get two cooking? When the hell did this happen? Oh my god, I have to check the screenshots. Oh my god, you guys. I ruined the account. I ruined the account, you guys. When I was doing the witch's potion quest, I cooked my own meat and burnt it just out of pure freaking instinct. Just like, I didn't even think about it and I got a cooking level from it. Oh no, that's not good, dude. That's not good at all. Oh my god. I don't know how we're supposed to proceed, honestly. I feel like... I am just gonna like hate looking at it for the rest of time, but like, do I restart the account? <laughs> do I restart the account because of two cooking? I mean, the 43 prayer grind, that took so long, but like, if I want to progress this account like really far, and no, because I can't just restart this account because I have the other account that's paired with it. I'd have to restart both accounts. Oh my God, you guys, I am so stupid and angry and just I'm feeling so many emotions right now but most of them are negative I didn't even think about it that's the problem I literally just didn't even think about it because I was just like I've never played an account that's like had restricted stats before and it just felt so natural for me to cook my own meat for that quest and I didn't even notice this happened like so long ago I didn't even notice that this happened until now like that happened many hours ago <sighs> I don't know man I don't know Will I restart the 807? Will I restart the skiller? Find out right now. That's right, you guys. In the next episode, I'll be restarting the 807 account and getting it back to the point where we left off in this one. And don't worry, the next video won't be the same as this one since I can skip through most of the repeated progress. After the account has been remade, I can kick the old 807 out of the group and it'll be like it never existed. So say goodbye to Killer Group Iron Man and say hello to Chef807. Thank you all very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. But before I go, I just wanna shout out a couple people who inspired this series. If you like 807s, go check out Life's channel. He's got a very impressive 807 series where he's also a 30 defense peer with the goal of obtaining full Inquisitor. Also, check out Mr. Frog's Level 3 Skiller series, and also his Zayaloc Ultimate Iron Man series. They're both very good. Both their channels have been linked down below in the description. And lastly, a massive shout out to all the channel members. In the Dune Legends tier, we have Ia, Musha, and Hybrid Chills. Huge shout out to those three. In the Dune Lords tier, we have Icarus, Jacob P, Humorbot, Matthew Carroll, Ian Willis, and Josh Funderberg. And in the Dune Lads tier, we have Cannon, Weirdo, Kai, Bash T, The Corf, and Lunar Forte. If you want to find out more about channel memberships, click the join button down below next to the subscribe button. Thank you all and see you next time.